Welcome to the Board Game Marketing Podcast. Let's cue the intro. This is the number one podcast to learn marketing strategies for your board game. Whether you're just starting on your first game or an experienced designer, you've come to the right place. My name is Nalin, and let's talk marketing for your game. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Board Game Marketing Podcast. In this podcast, I interview creators who have successfully funded their ideas on Kickstarter to learn more about their journey to launch and help you formulate your own plan. I also bring on experts in the tabletop space to talk about all the facets of marketing and building your game publishing company. If you've been listening for a while now, you know that I hold nothing back. So in these episodes, be prepared to hear me ask the hard questions and really get down to the finer details. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Board Game Marketing Podcast. Today, we're so lucky to have Tris Rawson on the show, and I'm so excited for everything he's going to be sharing with us today. So Tris, welcome to the show. Hi, and thank you for having me. Perfect. Well, I would love it if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and also about, you know, your your game that we're going to be talking about today before we get into the details. Okay. Um, well, um, I've been in the board game market now for nearly four years. Um, prior to that, I had a, a history in um, working in educational design where I'd spent um, roughly 20 years um, developing resources for children. Um, also working in the marketing sector within education as well. Um, and I, I was made redundant. So um, uh, I, I guess the reason why I got it was quite a, um, a, a lucky um, happenstance that, that got me into board games. Um, I was illustrating a children's book and um, it wasn't really, the, the artwork was good, but the, the story wasn't going anywhere. And my, my daughter turned up with um, a, a board game that she'd been developing um, with uh, my parents um, after uh, spending a day there and I just thought why not turn it into a board game and um, it it went from there. (laughs) That's really incredible that like you know your your daughter was starting work on this and and with your your parents too and then it became kind of I would say like a family project in a way? Yeah very much so Uh, I mean we worked on a different game but it's just the the artwork that I had for this book was um, so rich and um, at, at that point, I was very good at starting projects but not finishing them, um, <laughs> which I guess is a, a problem for many creatives. Um, so, um, but because I was made redundant, um, I was in a position that if I had to take on any projects, the, the project had to work. Um, so there was a little bit more incentive there because I was potentially wasting time where I should have been really concentrating on earning money. So um, I, I just put my heart and soul into it, um, and with the, the help of um, the Facebook communities, because in reality, at that point, I didn't have the faintest idea what I was doing with regards to board game design. I had no background in it. Um, it, it, it was um, fortunately a success, and, and that's Pebble Rock Delivery Service, which is um, hitting Walmart in a, a couple of weeks. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very fortunate. I realise it doesn't that doesn't happen very often, but yeah, um, first time attempt and it worked. Yeah, before we dig into kind of like uh, Facebook and how you were using Facebook to, to market for your game, I'd love to talk to you more about, too, like how you first got into just game design, right? You were already uh, kind of in this community doing a lot of artwork and things like that. I'd love for you to kind of talk to us more about that and, and how it kind of transitioned into from there into you being an actual game designer here. So, well, um, I've, I've been very lucky and, and I'm sure... To a degree, it, it's quite unconventional. So um, it is basically basically off the, the that first project. Um, so, um, like I said, I didn't really have an idea what I was doing with board game design, but um, because I've worked in education, I, I think the the basic rule set of how to create resources for children and how to portray information in a very visual manner translates into board game design almost perfectly. It gives you a very much a, um, a, a clear insight into um, visual representation of information, iconography, um, and just getting things across in the simplest manner possible. Um, so I think that was a huge advantage. Um, so when I started with this first game, I started 
posting from day one. And um, what happened was is that that gained a gained a following. Uh, unfortunately, from that day, um, three or four years ago, it's it's allowed for additional work to come in because people have seen it, commented on it, and had similar projects. So as soon as I start a new project, I I start showing that from day one and taking people on that journey with me, and that invariably leads to to more work. So, so there's no real um, there's no real plan with it. It just seems to be um, you know this 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 nice circumstance that due to the work that I'm showing and sharing, it, it generates more work each time. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like it comes so naturally to you, right? Sharing what you're working on, and you said even from the first day, a lot of people struggle with this, right? They come into game design, they come into this marketing of their game, and they're like, what do I share? How do I share? What do I say? Um, to, to these people who are, who are new, what, what kind of advice or recommendations do you have since it seems to come so naturally? I guess just be, be open and honest, and, and you, you've got to factor in that the, the first time I did, I did this, and I'm still very much to this day, um, it was based on me needing that information. Um, it was based on me asking questions, not to say, hey, look at this artwork, isn't it great? Or, you know, my game is brilliant, you want to buy it in the future, and stuff like that. I was, I was asking pertinent questions about, you know, is this design correct? Does this card layout work? Um, you know, what do you think about designing a game that's based on, um, you know, a, a delivery mechanism and, and all kinds of stuff like this? So the, obje- the objective was genuine feedback to help me. Um, it just so happened that that infuses people and gets people interested in the project. And by the time you've been working on something for seven or eight months, you've you've got people that have been on that journey for the same length of time. And um, I think it's very important from the point of view to, to not just put those questions out there, but to do it with the, 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 the genuine reason of, of wanting that feedback and implementing it, coming back to the groups and saying, look, I've, I've listened to what you've said. Um, you know, and that's not to say that the, the, what people say is always right. I'm not saying, um, you know, just <laughs> to do that with everyone. Um, there's sometimes some, some um, you know, not great ideas out there, but there are a lot of people out there with a, you know, a rich history in board games, be that just playing it or, or, or designing them and, and what have you, and take their take their information on board. It's invaluable and it's free. <laughs> That's incredible. You know, just being like you were talking about, just coming to the community and getting and just kind of osmosising or taking in that feedback that people have, the the years of experience that people have, and kind of taking it and choosing and picking what's right for you and then coming back and saying, hey, thank you for your feedback and here's what I did. And that itself is, is marketing, right? Coming back again and again and again and kind of showing up. Yeah, yeah. But the, the irony of it is is that um, it's very much um, a, a byproduct. Um, so it's not, wasn't the intention. I think it, I, I, I understand it more now. Um, but um, to begin with, it purely was that. But, but you're right. It turned out that it, it's also probably the best marketing you can give yourself as you're designing a game as well. I mean, there's a second layer to this, and that is that um, I'm sure like most people that work in board game design, um, I work by myself um, in in my own office, um, and I'm a team of one. Um, so, so mainly for my own sanity as well, um, I, I, I use the communities um, almost like my office colleagues. So, you know, these are the people that you stop and have a meeting with about the designs you've been doing and and listen to their comments about it. And um, so they very much uh, fulfill a role for me uh, because it's a, it's quite a lonely job when you're working on your own on a project and you can get um, you can get snowed down with your own idea and um, that's not necessarily always a good thing. You need to to show it to the world and, and get you know constructive feedback. Yeah, no, that's absolutely like a great point to bring up to like myself even. Uh, me, you know, I work by myself at home in an office, and just like what you're saying, sometimes it's, it's really great to just bounce ideas off of each other and just be on the same kind of ship with other people too, or feel like you're part of something bigger. So I totally get what you're saying there, Tris. Um, and from here, right, you started again sharing your work from day one, and you started getting all this really great feedback from people, and a lot of people started following you. Practically speaking, how what did you what did you start doing to kind of 
capture them as true followers for your game um, so that, you know, you're, when you knew coming to Kickstarter, things were going to happen for it. Um, okay, so there's, there's several different routes. I mean, you've got to use a, a sort of common sense marketing head. Um, I, I mean, I think, I think the main part is, is, is what we've already covered, and that is just um, introducing people from day one. Um, I think that's so important because I, I say a lot of um, great games um, just turn up um, a week before they're supposed to hit Kickstarter, and you're just like, where, where has this come from? And because of that, it sounds a bit disingenuous when people start showing the artwork and saying, hey, get on board with this, because you know that the only reason why they're there is to sell the game rather than to, I guess, take people on a journey with you. Um, but on top of that, there's um, there's the everyday marketing that needs to be done. So there's, there's pre-prep for Facebook with Facebook ads and, and, and what have you. Um, but more than just photographs and what have you, working on... Um, um, small videos, stuff that's going to capture people's imagination to see it. Um, getting blogs out there. Um, I, I generally, if I do a game, I do a blog. So I'll do, um, I'll, I'll write about the whole journey, uh, my thought process behind the game, my, my reasoning behind it. So um, again, I think a lot of the marketing that I do is based not on selling, but giving something in return for people's interest in the game. So um it's it's always based on the journey, my thought process, and something that people can glean from the game process if it's something that they're interested in doing. Um, and I think that's a much more positive way of marketing because you're giving something to them and in return they, you might generate enough interest for them to want to buy it or, or look into the game or, or future games. Um, so that's kind of been my mantra, really. Um, it is... Um, well, it, it, it is more moving forwards um, is to is to take that, that that mindset rather than just sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like sharing your journey and seeing, you know, sh- sharing different parts of it too, so that people can resonate with what you're doing and kind of your thoughts, your feelings, the the way you're kind of approaching the project. And from here, yeah. what kind of I guess goals did you have w- during the pre-launch? And when it comes to, you know, marketing and also how did you get towards that goal? Okay, so um, I wanted a thousand followers uh, or a thousand notifications on on Kickstarter uh, before I started. Uh, I think we came in just shy of that. I think we were just short of a thousand, give 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 or take 20 or 30. So um, I knew that was in um, a relatively good position for day one and, and we, we and we hit target after just just after 24 hours um so um i think that's important um to to, to monitor um those numbers um i, I mean it, to be honest with you I, I i i went into it kind of a little bit blind because this this was although i've been involved in kick, kickstarters in the past with other people this was the first time that i'd actually run one myself um so really i didn't have much of an idea of you know what figures were needed it was more of um it was more of a gut feeling um and um <laughs> sorry to sound like a broken record but it does go back to the fact that um people had been following it and reviewing it and and giving me the feedback from day one uh, i mean another important bit was getting it out to reviewers and what have you and i think i've got a nice mix um you know of people that are um starting out their 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 review journey and what have you up to um, professional level reviewers. Uh, I, I don't have a big budget for this, really. So, so I, I think I got a nice spread of people that are very much um, up and coming that were willing to review the game for free, but had enough of a presence to really get those game reviews um, out there still without the big budget. Got it. So, just um, to, to recap, I think you were saying that your your strategy was really to get um, these kind of organic relationships being built. Um, mm-hmm. from the get-go by by sharing your work, sharing the game, and also using the the game and, and the attractiveness of the game, too, to, to talk to reviewers, to get them to kind of leverage their audience to come to your game. Is, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got a relatively big following, but I recognize that was nowhere near enough, uh, big enough to, to 
to, to launch a, a, a big successful Kickstarter. Um, I, I, and in all honesty, the game wasn't um, hugely successful, but for a first Kickstarter, um, I'm very proud of the numbers that we, we eventually reached. Um, it, you know, but it's not it's not a you know hundred thousand pound Kickstarter or anything along those lines. Um, that, that that's the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm excited for that. And I guess practically speaking, too, you mentioned Facebook, right? How did you choose Facebook? Why did you choose Facebook? Why not things like Instagram or, or Twitter or, you know, anything else, else that's out there? Well, um, yeah, I do use, I do use Twitter. Um, but, um, Facebook has, has already got these pre-established communities, um, on there. And, um, each community has a different, a different feel to it as to, um, what kind of information you're going to get back off people and what have you. But there are, um, a lot of sites, um, for example, like the um, uh, board game design lab community and what have you, that are um, just a, a, a wealth of knowledge, um, and they help keep me, me honest through the game. Um, from the point of view that, that you know they they give um, good reviews on the work that you do, but they don't suffer fools gladly either. So if your work's terrible, they'll they'll, they'll tell you, <laughs> which is is what you need in this market because. Um, gone are the days on Kickstarter where you can cut it with a, a subpar game. It needs to be really, really tight. Um, but um, yeah, um, I, th- I think communities like that um, just just help help an awful lot. Uh, and um, I wouldn't have got anywhere with uh, without their feedback. But they, they also helped with the, the Kickstarter pages and what have you. Gave me their review and honest thoughts on whether they thought it would be successful. And if they saw it, um, you know. Um, Separate from knowing me and knowing about the projects, they'd give a, the honest view of yes, this would capture my attention. Got it. Okay, so you were again really engaging with this community, um, going into like forming these relationships and the, and then reaching out to these reviewers, and you were directing people to the Kickstarter page to click that notify me on launch button, and you were trying to reach that thousand person goal. So coming up closer to your campaign, right? Like the week out before the campaign, what was that like? How did you get people hyped up? How did you get people to know that it was coming? Like, was there anything special you were doing there? Um, I think by that point, um, we've got our, our launch video ready. Um, and the initial idea with that was to get a professional to do it. But um, I, I got some of the quotes and it would wipe, it would have wiped out my marketing budget to get this really professional video done. So, um, I, I took a couple of weeks out and did it myself. So it probably took about four times longer than anybody else, but I, I was quite proud of that by the end. And, and getting that out there to give people um, a flavour of what the game was, but with that theme and story that goes with it as well. I, I think it had uh, the right music and the right tone and atmosphere to it. And that, that really bumped up the numbers. Um, so, so, so yeah, um, that was one of the things. And also, Getting your reviews in early. So um, as we reached that last week um, before the launch, um, we started to receive um, three or four um, actual video video reviews. So from there, we, we were able to tease people out with those and say, you know, this is what the reviews are saying. They think it's great. Um, take a look here, and it's launching next week. So click, click the notify button after having a look uh, and took it from there, really. Got it. And as a new creator, right, first time launching Kickstarter, what was launch day like for you? Um, uh, it was, um, I can hear the smile. Well, I can hear the smile in your voice too. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, on the day it was um, you'd 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 heard the panic. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's uh, anyone that's done Kickstarters will will tell you it's probably. Um, the most nerve-wracking thing you can do is to, to do that launch button, and um, I was petrified uh, because you know there's there's probably been um, four or five months' work put into this um, over the space of a year. Um, I've given up weekends and evenings and uh, neglected my family for the sake of doing this uh, and what have you. So it had to it had to work, uh, and unfortunately it did. But it, it's um, it's a very scary experience. It's a very much uh, the whole of Kickstarter as a, um, its entirety is is one of the biggest roller coaster rides I think you can go on. There's real highs and lows there. Got it. Yeah, I, I, 
I think definitely like kind of even an understatement to say scary experience and nervous. <laughs> a lot of people go through that, you know, like that kind of dread going up to that pressing that that launch button too. But I can see now um, that after the fact, you know, you, you, you have a good time kind of thinking back on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's not something that I want to um, revisit in a hurry. I think I need to, uh, and that's not to say I, I, I didn't enjoy the experience, but um, I think it takes something from you after you've done it. It's, it. I felt quite exhausted after running it. And I think one of the mistakes I made on my Kickstarter was to run it for an entire 30 days. Um, I think in hindsight, I could have run, run it for, for half of that time and just um, it, it been more concentrated in the marketing over that period. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I found it quite draining. I think it's probably if my, my next Kickstarter is going to be, um, probably in about a year's time, I'd have thought. Um, so, um, with, with, with lots of changes based on my experience. Yeah. Let's, let's kind of talk a little bit more about the, the campaign and kind of like what marketing you did during the campaign. And also, uh, as you touched on here, like what you do next time too. So before we get to what you do next time, Tell us more about uh, what kind of things you did to, to keep the momentum going for the, the 30 days. Like you said, it's a really long time. Yeah, it is. So we, we, we had a few um, interesting stretch goals um, in there. So, um, again, uh, going back to my mantra of giving something within your marketing, um, a, a lot of the marketing that we're doing was showing you artwork um, on, on the stretch goals that were coming up or that had just been completed uh, and showing that as a, as a process. Um, also, um, blogs around that as well, so explaining how the artwork's been done um, and stuff. So, so there's that side of it, as long as um, alongside traditional marketing. So, just um, Facebook ads with, uh, are nice images of the, the games um, mixed in with um, review quotes. Um, we were very fortunate with the reviews. Um, everybody liked it. We managed to glean some 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 lovely quotes. Um, especially towards the end, because we had the uh, the dice tower guys come in, so uh, to have um, the likes of um, uh, Andy Garcia and, and what have you re- re- review it, albeit briefly, but to say you know yeah we really like the look of this was was gold from a marketing perspective. So that was straight onto um, our digital adverts and thrown onto Facebook. That's amazing. Yeah, you said a lot of traditional marketing. Um, kind of really utilizing those reviews that came out and, and kind of expanding them and, and kind of spreading them out everywhere too. And yeah, yeah. When, when it came sorry, to- I said that. I'm sorry, I was going to say, I said that it's Z Garcia, isn't it? My, my apologies, Z, if he ever hears it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. And you mentioned um, also for the campaign itself too. It was again. You, it was really long, right? What kind of things were you, were you personally doing to to kind of keep your energy up? I guess throughout this whole entire time, because it is it is draining. Yeah, it is. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I had work on in the background as well. So um, I, I was concentrating on other board game projects and what have you. But I, I think probably a good five or six hours a day over that thirty hour, so sorry, those thirty days um, was on. on on just developing um, more visuals and what have you. And, and um, I, I learned quite a lot from that because um, it's very easy to recognize, to, to think that um, your baby, your game that you're putting out into the world is everybody else's as interested in it as you are. Um, and I think in the first week um, I overdid it with my marketing. So I, I was putting stuff to the, the Facebook pages and what have you. And to a point where it came back with a couple of comments saying, just calm down a little bit because we're seeing a bit too much of this. Um, so that, that's, um, I think that's something that I'll be mindful of in the future that, um, not everybody's going to be as enthusiastic about my game as I am. So by all means, market it, but do it in a, in a measured way uh, rather than there's a difference between marketing and spamming. <laughs> um, and, um, I, I was bordering on that, I think in the first week or so. Um, but yeah, um, just just um, traditional Facebook ads, Twitter ads, um, working on a marketing budget, working on the analytics, having a look where I was getting the hits from. Um, if I was asking Facebook groups to to do bits of marketing for me by putting me in their banner and stuff like that, 
making sure that the links were um, independently uh, linked to um, uh, Kickstarter, so I could review the analytics on it and see where you know where the, the where the cash was coming from, really. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Is to really go where the data tells you to go, right? A lot of times we spend time and effort doing things that don't move the needle. And then if we just have data on it, we can look, hey, this is what's really moving the needle and really go harder there. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important. I, I mean, I'm sure I wasted hours uh, this time. Um, you know, I, I, I think moving forwards, I'll, I'll definitely pay a lot more attention to the data or, or you know, it, I've got more knowledge of where where the sales come from this time around. Got it. And this is a great kind of segue into our, our next kind of topic here. Like, what would you take from this campaign for your next one? So, um, I think I think I'd take the same route to begin with. So, as I start developing the the, the new games, um, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've got a, a couple of beautiful games um, signed with some uh, some great uh, game designers. So, I'm I'm looking forward to to showing that from day one uh, and developing it. Um, so. I think that's always going to be my core uh, with this. It, it's it's free marketing, it's free help, and um, it's engaging and fun for, for myself and 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 for the people that 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 enjoy it and review it and and give that feedback. So so um, I I can't emphasise enough how important that's been for me and how important it should be for everybody really. Um, but um, Moving on from there, just be more mindful of the analytics. Um, I think I'd invest more money in some big reviewers. Um, and uh, I've developed some relationships with some good reviewers um, through this. And I think by the time I come to my next one, they're going to be um, far bigger than, than they were. So there's a nice conversation to have with the, these guys, having already worked with them, um, when they, they move to the next level. Um, in review status, I suppose. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I don't think there's an awful lot more, um, I could do. I mean, next time maybe I'll get someone in to help me on the marketing as well. Um, I'm very much a one man show and I think that spread me a bit too thin on this first Kickstarter. So maybe next time I'll, I'll look into outsourcing some of that, that pressure. That's that's amazing. Like you, you did all of that by yourself, actually. A, a lot of people who are, are in this kind of first time creator position also will, will kind of be doing everything by themselves, too. Um, do you have any kind of recommendations for for people you know, going in alone? Uh, don't start drinking before midday. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, so, um, yeah, just. Um, just manage your expectations. Just recognise that you know, your own limitations, um, and that's not to say you know don't work hard and do your best. But just um, the worst thing you can do is start beating yourself up for for trying your best. You know, because um, at the end of the day, that's what you're doing, and just be just recognise that you can only do your best. You know, so so um, yeah, because I mean, with Kickstarters, I think even the most successful ones. Um, they they have days where they have dips and that you know you, you you have this you have these massive highs on the first two or three days of your Kickstarter as you see that you know you're, you're smashing targets and the money's coming in and then all of a sudden um, it it drops by sixty seventy percent and you you you're there thinking what am I doing wrong why why aren't people buying into the game and um, it's just the natural order of a Kickstarter it has um, these dips uh, these these troughs and peaks. Um, I recognise that it's not you that that's at fault there. It's just the the nature of Kickstarter. Got it. You know that was really good advice for for people who might be you know starting to get overwhelmed, right, about the whole entire process. So that's so that's again really good to like bring up again too. Um, so Tris, thank you so much for coming on the show and just sharing all these insights about your campaign, about marketing, and then kind of also what you do. Next, too, um, if people want to learn more about the project or connect with you, where where can they find you? Um, so the Mariana Trench is um, still on Kickstarter. I'm in the process of sourcing out um, a post-launch um, 
uh, pages and, and the ability to buy into uh, the Mariana's Trench over the next week or two. So if you just uh, go to Kickstarter and type in Mariana Trench, you'll find me there. Um, I, I'm also um, all over Facebook. Um, so if you look up Bright Light Games on Facebook, uh, that will link you into my website and um, also my, my pages where I like to have uh, discussions about the, the work I'm, I'm working on. So get involved and, uh, you know, be a, be a critique of my work. You know, I'd be very grateful if, if people did that. Love it. So to, to every listener out there, you know, connect with Tris. He, he's looking forward to hearing from you. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. Thank, <laughs> yeah, thank you again for coming on today, Tris. That's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And that wraps up our episode today. If you found what we talked about today helpful in any way, please be sure to leave a review to help others find this podcast. And most importantly, if you're feeling that fire and you're ready to get started on your Kickstarter campaign, be sure to head to the show notes of the podcast. I've linked some of my resources that others have used to successfully launch and get funded. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Board Game Marketing Podcast. For daily tips and advice, find us in the Board Game Marketing Group on Facebook. See you next week.